Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the Flow Hive. Now, this is one of the most common questions that I get in my comments, and that is, what's my opinion of the Flow Hive? Now, if you've been to this channel, you realize I've got two of them, one that I bought for $1,000 and one that I built for about, well, at the time it was about $300. Now I think it costs around $400 to build one. Um, but the Flow Hive was my gateway to beekeeping. If it wasn't for the Flow Hive, I wouldn't be a beekeeper today. So if you haven't, if you're the unicorn, if you're the one person out there who is interested in beekeeping, you've looked up bee videos and you saw this and said, Flow Hive, what's the Flow Hive? If you haven't heard of the Flow Hive, everybody else be patient. I'm gonna explain it to the unicorn. The, that's a compliment, by the way. The unicorn is the one individual who hasn't heard anything about the Flow Hive. Anyways, so. The Flow Hive. The Flow Hive was created by Stuart and Cedar Anderson in Australia. It is the, or it has been touted as the first major innovation in beekeeping in 150 years. Prior to this, most people used Langstroth hives that were developed, I believe, in the 1800s, maybe before, I'm not exactly sure. But this is the first major innovation in beekeeping in 150 years. Now, Stuart and Cedar Anderson went out to a GoFundMe website, I'm not sure which one, maybe it's called GoFundMe, I'm not sure. But they went out and they asked for $70,000 to start their company to bring their invention to market and people saw what it was immediately and they ended up getting 12 to $13 million to bring it to market and they have brought it to market. The thing about the Flow Hive is, is it costs $1,000 or thereabouts, about $700, but by the time you ship it to the United States and buy all the gear and everything, it's about $1,000 investment to become a beekeeper with the Flow Hive system. But again, this was my introduction to beekeeping. If it wasn't for the Flow Hive, I would not be a beekeeper today. So I ordered my Flow Hive about three seasons ago. This is my third season as a beekeeper. And I placed my order and while it was on order, it took a while before it would show up. There were a lot of people ordering, they were back ordered, they had to ship from Australia. And in that time, I, I jumped onto YouTube and I learned as much as I could about beekeeping and specifically as much as I could about the Flow Hive. And that's where I was introduced to beekeepers like Frederick Dunn. That was the first honey flow extraction that I'd seen from the Flow Hive was on Frederick Dunn's YouTube channel. Uh, that also introduced me to Jim at Vino Farm. Now, Jim's never actually put the flow frames on his Flow Hive in a meaningful way. And maybe he will someday, but maybe he won't. And that's some of the things that we're going to talk about today. Um, because this is a very expensive investment if you're going to become a beekeeper. So that goes back to, is it worth it? What's my opinion? My opinion is, is that if a thousand dollar flow hive gets you into beekeeping, then it's worth it. Now, if you're going to have a couple of garden hives and you don't plan on having any more than one or two hives and you want some very pretty, very well-built hives in your yard, these might be the way to go instead of getting Langstroth. But let me caution you, you are still going to have to get into the beehive. See, that was a problem when Flow Hive first started. They were marketed as honey on tap. You kind of got the impression that you never had to get into the beehive. And to be honest, that's what I thought. When I bought my Flow Hive, when I pushed the submit button on the, on the shopping cart and I purchased it, I thought, this is going to be great. It's going to be like honey coming out of a keg. I'm never going to have to get into the beehive. I'm only going to have to deal with the bees when I initially put them in there. After that, I go around to the back. The bees don't mind that I'm tearing up their comb and getting the honey out. Um, everything was going to be great. And I think they've changed their marketing campaign since to let you know that this is a way to extract honey differently, but you still have to manage your bees and you still have to manage your bees. Um, this frame, if you're not familiar with it, the way that it works is the honeycomb is pre-built. It's built out of plastic. And that's also something that a lot of people, a lot of the critics say, hey, you shouldn't be keep with plastic. Um, but I can tell you, I've also been using plastic foundation in my Langstroth hives since I started beekeeping. So, in my, in my opinion, and I'm just a third year noob, I'm a, I'm a new beekeeper, I've not noticed the bees having any problem whatsoever with the plastic. I believe it's all food grade, it's covered in beeswax. I think it's going to be good. 
But the difference between this frame and that frame for a Langstroth is that this comb is completely built out. However, the comb is in two pieces. And when you insert the key to extract your honey after the bees have filled and capped these frames, what it does is it will break the comb in half vertically. And that will allow the honey to flow down and out of the hive. And that is a great thing. If you don't have an extractor or you don't want to destroy the comb to get the honey, this works wonderfully. And again, if you're only going to have one or two hives, this works wonderfully. The question is utility. You're going to spend about $1,000 on this hive, getting it to America and getting everything you need to beekeep. I think it's 700 and some. I'm not exactly sure of the price right now. I just know that it was expensive. It was around $1,000 when I bought mine. Um, and in order for this to pay itself off, it's going to have to last quite a long time. Now, they are well built. Uh, I'll tell you that, and if you take care of your frames, and I believe you will if you spend $1,000 on a setup, you're going to take care of your frames. Um, they should last quite a while. I've not noticed anything bad yet. Everything's very, very well made. Um, but there are some things that you're going to have to be aware of, and those things are that you are going to have to manage your colony. You are going to have to get down onto the brood box. You are going to have to inspect and look for disease, look for varroa mites, look for uh, new queens. You're gonna have to decide whether or not you're going to split. You're gonna have to make sure that everything is going the way that it should be going down in the brood chamber so that you can get some honey in your flow hive. Um, you're also going to have to leave some honey on the hive over winter. And I don't know if anybody, now some people may, I don't know if anybody leaves their flow hive, sit out on their beehive throughout the winter uh, in the cold. And I don't know how that is going to affect the flow frames themselves. Um, what you will probably end up doing is you'll probably end up having a medium or a deep sitting above your brood chamber and below your flow hive with standard Langstroth frames that you will allow the bees to fill and keep that honey over the winter or to store sugar syrup if you take all their honey. But they work for it. You should let them keep some of their own honey. Anyways, um, you are still going to have to manage your bees. You are still going to have to get into the hive. Um, it's something that's going to have to happen. So if you're thinking about getting a flow hive, thinking that you're going to get honey out of the hive like a keg, it will do that. If you think you're going to get a flow hive so that you don't have to get into your bees and manage the colony, it's not going to do that. You're still going to have to get into the, uh, into the beehive and manage your colony. Um, I do have a video we'll put it up there, that shows you how you can build your own flow hive for about, it was $300 at the time, now it's about $400. Prices have gone up a little bit, but you can build your own flow hive uh, a lot cheaper and you will only have to purchase the frames themselves from uh, honeyflow.com, so that should save you a little bit of money. Everything else can be done with a standard Langstroth box. Um, so with all of that, said we talk about value value the utility of it a flow hive again we've said was about a thousand dollars when it's all said and done and shipped to the united states maybe a little bit less now i'm not sure what sales they have going on but you can buy an entire setup the bottom board all the way to the top and everything you need usually including a smoker and a veil and a and, and gloves and a hive tool uh, with a length straw set up for probably about $300 out there. There's a lot of websites that will sell the bundle for, for very, very cheap, and that is a very inexpensive way to get into beekeeping. Um, I can also tell you that when you become a beekeeper, uh, you are going to have to deal with splitting your hives. Your hives are going to want to multiply. Your bees are going to want to multiply naturally and propagate their species. Um, and as beekeepers, we try to prevent swarms and keep as many bees as we can in the apiary because more bees equal more honey, right? And every time your bees swarm, up to half of your colony can fly away, which can really slow down your honey production. Um, and what that means is you're probably going to end up buying more and more hives. So you start with one, you'll, you'll have two. You have two, you're going to end up with four, then eight, then so on and so forth. When I started my first year, I started with one flow hive that I got from Australia and one standard Langstroth hive. By the end of the season, I had built my second flow hive and purchased another set up for Langstroth. So I had four hives at the end of my first season. At the end of my second season, which was last year, I believe I had eight hives here and two up the street. So that's 10. And right now I'm expanding again. So 
the bees want to expand and if you want to have nothing but a flow hive setup that's going to cost you a lot of money so again you're going to end up with some Langstroth hives if money means anything to you because running a flow hive operation is very very expensive I didn't say it was bad it's just very very expensive they are very good hives especially when showing your friends, your relatives, your neighbors, you bring them over, you show them the flow hive, and that gets them interested in becoming beekeepers. Again, this was my gateway to beekeeping. If it wasn't for the flow hive, I wouldn't have gone out and found the videos on YouTube. I wouldn't have uh, found the people with all of the knowledge that has led me to become uh, a more conscientious beekeeper. Um, and it really brings you into the world of animal husbandry. Now, of course, these are bees, and not a flock of sheep or a herd of cattle, but it is animal husbandry. You feel responsible for the health and well-being of your colonies, and you want to take care of them to the best of your ability. Uh, you will also become more in tune with the environment. You will know what flowers are blooming at what time, and, and what nectar is available, and what pollen is available. And you will, if you're the first beekeeper in your area, you're going to notice a change in the area where you live. You're going to notice that the year after you've become a beekeeper, there are more flowers blooming in your area. Um, these are the things that happen when you become a beekeeper. So, I highly encourage it. And again, this was my gateway into beekeeping, the flow hive. The last difference and the last thing that I guess I should speak about on the flow hive is that one benefit of the flow hive over the Langstroth hives, outside of being able to just get your honey on tap, is that your honey can taste differently in each one of the frames. Okay, so your, your bees are gonna fill frames sequentially for the most part, and they may be on peach trees one day, they may be on blueberry bushes the next day, they may be on apple trees or pear trees the next day, or clover or dandelion. And what that is going to do is it's going to give you a different flavored honey in each one of the flow hives. And then when you're ready to harvest, you would put them in individual jars. You can not only see the difference in color, but you can also taste the difference. And that's something that as a beekeeper that also has Langstroth setups, when I am extracting from my Langstroth hives, it all goes into the extractor, it all comes out and goes into a bucket, and it's kind of homogenized. Now, that doesn't mean my honey doesn't taste good. It doesn't mean that it doesn't taste as good. It's just homogenized, and, and I can't as readily pick out the note of blueberry or the note of strawberry or the note of peach or the note of apple or whatever flowers the bees were on that day. Um, that is a difference. So that's another benefit that you're going to have with the flow hive. So all in all, my opinion of the flow hive, my opinion is, is that it's worth it. At least it's worth it to have one, maybe two, and I have two. Um, because if you are not a beekeeper and you're thinking about becoming a beekeeper, this will get you there. Um, if you like to have honey that tastes specifically like the flowers that the bees were on when they gathered it, this will get you there. If you are looking for a novelty beehive that looks nice in your garden, this will get you there. Uh, it is a very important innovation in beekeeping and I think that Cedar and Stuart Anderson in Australia have earned their place in the history books with this hive. So with all that said, I hope I've answered some of your questions. I hope I answered the main question, and that is, what do I think of the Flow Hive? I like it. Um, but if you like this video, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you have something to say, by all means, please comment. And I understand that the Flow Hive sometimes is a controversial issue with beekeepers. Um, I wasn't trying to walk the middle of the road, but there are advantages and disadvantages to both Langstroth and Flow Hives, so there you go. So leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and by all means, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to be notified of my new content. I try to drop a video every Friday at 3 o'clock, and we try to keep it light and have fun here, and I hope that you come along and join me in my journey of beekeeping. With all that said, have a great day, be happy, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.